I want to call our attention to Matthew's chapter 20 this morning, beginning at verse number 29. Matthew's, Matthew's chapter 20, New Testament text. Matthew's chapter 20. Amen, amen. Beginning at verse number 29. Beginning at verse 29, I'm using the NIV Bible. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, <clears throat> son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do <clears throat> for you? Lord, they answered. We want our sight. <laughs> we want our sight. We don't want your sight. We want our sight. And Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately they received their sight and followed him. Lord, how we thank you, how we praise you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. It's yours. Thank you, God, again for <clears throat> waking us up this morning starting us on our way how we give you praise and glory father god you're worthy of all our praise we thank you again afresh today as we thank you for jesus christ your son and our savior is in that name we pray we ask you god to forgive us of all our sins cleanse us god through and through let nothing God about us hinder us today, get in our way today. We need to hear words from the Lord. God, we ask you, God, to move and just have your way. Touch the preacher as well as the hearers today. Fill us with your word and with your spirit. Let your word go forward today with simplicity and with power. Boys, in Jesus' name we pray and we do thank you. And the church say, amen, amen. Hallelujah. I want to I want to lift from this text here. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. I want to lift from this text. Don't tell me to shut up. Don't 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 tell me. You got to say that with some attitude. Don't, don't, don't you tell me to shut up. <laughs> y'all didn't say that right. If y'all were mad, you got to say that like, like your enemy told you. Huh? Huh? You got to, you got to, you got to rap back. I know you didn't. I know you didn't. Don't, don't tell me. Just shut up. What's wrong with it? You've heard this saying, right? You've heard this saying as old as the 1800s. It's a saying that says, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the grease. Squeaky wheel that gets the grease. In other words, it, it, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's saying that it is a, it's a noticeable problem of the loudest problem that is noticed or that get the attention, right? It's the, it's the loudest or the noticeable problem that gets the attention. Uh, I believe that's true, that is true as well when we approach God, right? I think, I think, I think 
I think the, the noticeable faith, right, faith that's noticeable or the loudest faith is the faith that gets God's attention. Huh? That's what I believe happened in the text, that, that, that it's the loudest, it's the noticeable faith that will get the attention of God. Uh, it's in the Bible, it's in the Bible in Luke chapter 5, there's a man who's a para, paralytic, right? He's a paralytic, and the scripture says that four of his friends, four of his friends had faith. They had faith that Jesus Christ could help the man who was paralyzed. He's paralyzed, he's on a mat, and four of his friends have faith that Jesus can help this man. When you look at that, that text over there in Luke 5, the Bible says that when those four men who carried that, this brother on the mat, they, they get to Jesus, they get to the house where Jesus is. And I know some, some people faith when they get to the house and they see that it's crowded, that, that it's a crowd, the house is packed with people. The Bible says they could not get in the house. And I know some people, when they can't get in or they show up to church and they say it's packed, they don't have no more seats, what? We'll get in our cars and, and we're going back home because it was too crowded and, and it's just uncomfortable, uh, 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 you know, being on top of each other. But now loud faith don't let crowds get in the way. Huh? Those four guys ignores the crowd, they go on top of the house and, and, and make a noise because they tearing up the roof of somebody else's house. Huh? You got to have that, that kind of faith that say, I'm going to tear the roof off the mother. Look, look, if, look, 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 I'll pay you for it. Y'all didn't, y'all didn't. I'm preaching better than y'all responding. I'm, I'm exegesing this thing. I'm, my homiletics is on point. Look, that, 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 they, 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 they coming at Jesus, and they decide nothing is going to stop us from getting to Jesus. That type of allowed faith, that, 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 that type of behavior, the Bible said, that Jesus was teaching when they let the man down on his mat in front of Jesus. Could you imagine Jesus looked up and said, well, I'll be a, what? Huh? Jesus said, I didn't see everything. But then he went on top of the house. It's that type of faith, people of God, that moves heaven, huh? And what, and what I'm trying, I hope my little sermon today help you understand that you got to come at this thing different, huh? If you're just trying to be proper and not noticeable, you're trying to get a miracle on the down low. You know, you're trying to have it undercover. Uh, no, it might ha not happen. You need some faith in Jesus. When everybody see you exercising such faith and they think something wrong with you, you, you got to be willing to be embarrassed to get the kind of miracle God has for you. <clears throat> this is an interesting text because before we get to the text, we have the mother the mother of the sons of Zebedee. She didn't ask Jesus for mercy. She asked him for a favor. I don't know about you, I don't even do favors all the time. Huh? I don't do favors all the time. She, she approaches Jesus <clears throat> because, because her sons recognize that, that this is Jesus' last march into Jerusalem. And last Passover, and, 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 and because he had predicted his death, like some people around for positions, they in this thing for the position they can get. 
And, and, and they, they, I don't know if the mother is the one that's tripping or if, or if they thought that maybe Jesus might listen to her. But the mother go to Jesus and said, Lord, I need a favor for you. She's the mother of the sons of Zebedee. She said, what do you want? Well, what I like to ask of you is that when you come into your kingdom, will you get one of my boys a seat on the left and one of my boys a seat on the right? That's all she was asking for. And Jesus said, you don't even know what you're asking for. And what you're asking for, it ain't really mine to grant. Huh, huh, you, know, you know, I don't know if your boys could handle uh, 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 what happens to you to want to sit on the right and to want to sit on the left. I mean, it's a good lesson that y'all need to make sure that whatever you're praying about, make sure you understand that if God give it to you, can you handle it? But Jesus said, it ain't really mine to give. I really can't give you that. But, but, but it's after that particular narrative in Scripture, that particular story, where the mother comes to Jesus, not so much in faith, but for a favor. And, 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 and Jesus go from that experience to on his way to Jerusalem for the last time. He's on his way to Jerusalem for the very last time. This is, this is late in Jesus' ministry. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He's on his way to die on a rugged cross. Yeah, this is going to be the last time that he celebrates the Passover with his disciples in this particular mode. Ha, uh, ha, uh, fully God and fully man. Ha, uh, and, and he's on his way there, <clears throat> and it's the end of his ministry. What makes sense here, that, that by now, Jesus' ministry, he's no longer popular because folk mad at him, but he has a nice portfolio. Jesus, they, they, they're not feeling him, but his work is impressive. I mean, I mean, by now, he didn't walk on water by now. I mean, I mean, by now, you know, he didn't got Lazarus up from the day. I, I, I mean, I mean, by now, he didn't allow the woman with the issue of blood to touch him. I, I mean, by now, he didn't heal folk with leprosy. Y'all, y'all hear me? I mean, his his portfolio by now is impressive. I mean, if any, you might not like Jesus, but you got to celebrate his portfolio. You got to say he ain't like the other Hebrew men. He he ain't like the other rabbis. That guy is somebody special, and so his work precedes him. I ought to just slow down parenthetically right there and say to you Baptists today that your work ought to precede you, that, 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 that the stuff that we are doing, St. John Baptist Church, ought to speak well of us in the community. His work, he got an impressive workload, and that might be why the blind men Act the way they act. The Bible said that, 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 that the blind men begin to holler at him. That Jesus and his disciples are leaving Jericho. And it says, a large crowd followed him. Large crowd following him and his disciples with him. And the Bible says, and his two blind men were sitting by the roadside. And when they heard, that's why you ought to talk about Jesus. When, when they heard Jesus was going by, they shouted. Huh? They heard Jesus was going by, they shouted. They shouted out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Two blind men, they, here it is, they, they beg Jesus. I don't miss this people of God that, that you, you, if you've read your Bible a little bit, you know that, that the road, this road that, 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 that leads from Jericho into Jerusalem or out of Jerusalem into Jericho is a well 
traveled road. You know, you know, you've heard, you've heard the, the, yeah, the story of the Good Samaritan and somebody fell prey and they was on a road <clears throat> that was leading from Jericho to Jerusalem. Uh, uh, in my reading, I discovered that, that Jericho at this time is one of the wealthier cities in Judea. And so it makes sense that, that beggars, it was common for beggars to hang out on this particular road because it's well-traveled. And if you are poor and need help and need assistance, you don't want to be begging on a road that's not heavily traveled. I mean, I mean, if you got some sense, one thing to be need help and be crazy, be dumb, be stupid. I mean, you need help and you on a road, ain't no traffic, one or two people. Huh? What? It'll make you stop and tell a beggar, partner, this ain't a good street. If you if you begging, you want to be on Broad Street. Huh. He's not, he's not, it, they, these guys are not just anywhere. They're begging, they're on a street that's heavily traveled. And what they've been doing, the common practice is, is to scream at the top of your voice when you're a beggar and ask somebody to have mercy. You've seen the signs around here that people that really, if they, if they want, they want to, they play on your, your you know, on, they pull at your heartstrings when, 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 when you pull up at the light and they have a sign. And they'll say, you know, I'm hungry, I need some food or whatever. And then at the bottom it says, God bless you. <laughs> and if you want God to bless you, you fall for that. You say, I want to be blessed by God. And so you roll your window down because what you said, that, look, my heart just went out to them. That, that sign, Reverend, said something to me. That's what's happening in the text. That, that's not only, look, what they do and they do it all the time. The only difference, huh, is that they're now crying out to Jesus. Can I just slow down right here? Because, because some of us are crying and beg, and we ask the government for cheese. Huh? We ask the government for housing. Huh? We ask the government for help for child care. Don't, don't get quiet. Huh? You will stop by your mama house on fixed income, and you ask her. But we don't want to ask Jesus. We don't want to ask Jesus. We want to ask everybody but Jesus. And what I love about the two blind men is that they have a reputation for begging on this street. But when they heard that Jesus, Christ, was in that crowd, and what they had already heard and believed, that's the difference. What they heard and believed about Jesus made them say, this is our lucky day. Huh? And they hollered out to Jesus. Huh? They said, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Boy, it's a beautiful thing huh, when you know, hallelujah, who you're crying to. Some of us, some of us don't want to cry, and we have our reasons for not wanting to cry. Some of us, some of us are too prideful, right? Our, our pride get in the way, and because we're prideful, we won't cry out. We don't want to, we don't want to come to church and let anybody see us crying out. Our fear, what, of rejection might be another reason why that, that we, we don't want to cry out to God because we don't want God to tell us no. We've been said no so many times that I can't take another no. And so, and so you just, because of your fear of being rejected again, you hold it to yourself. Of course, third, it might be just our lack of faith. That our lack of faith will rob us of, 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 of screaming out, of calling on, on God when he's present. 
Can I tell you he's present today because what? He's omnipresent. So, so he, he is present today. And, and, and will, will, we, will we get it right? The Bible said that both blind men, they understood who Christ Jesus, who he really was. They understand that he is the one sent by God. He is the one from heaven. And so they called him right. Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. On us. I like that. I like that. On us. On, look, look, look. They both of them say, we coming out of this thing. Huh, huh. Sometimes we feel like, Lord, have mercy on me. You just try to scream louder than your neighbor. No, Lord, bless all of us today. Huh? Lord, it's all right with me if you just bless everybody at church today. You don't have to just bless my role. Some of y'all, some of y'all done got used to going to church talking about, Lord, just bless my row. I don't care what you do on the back row, bless, just as long as you bless my row. Get out of here. Lord, if you're in the building, bless us. Bless us this morning. Huh? Lord, I don't know what everybody needs, but everybody, I believe, can stand a blessing this morning. Huh? Can anybody stand a blessing? Lord, Bless us. Yeah. 